G'day guys and gal. One of the most classic sci-fi tropes is having an alien species that Zerg rushes all the other factions, creating similar situations with humans with big guns shooting a shitload of oncoming swarm-like creatures that are generally insectoid in some way. But what if you take two Zerg rush factions, give them near limitless armies, and then get them to go Leroy Jenkins at each other non-stop? What would happen? The Octarius War would happen, baby. Where the Tunids and Orcs squared up in a near constant and extremely bloody war, both factions able to replenish their numbers just as fast as they were dying. Not to mention some of the other factions got involved here as well. Thus we were given the highest kill per minute war in the entirety of Warhammer 40k. Before we get started, one year ago I reviewed a Warhammer 40k mobile game called Tacticus. It was fun and enjoyable, but I thought I would move on from it after some time. Well, one year onwards and I pretty much have played every single day. I'm in the sixth highest ranked guild on the planet and I I've beaten every single campaign mission, including the legendary ones. Tacticus has consumed my soul, so I'm bringing you guys down with me, as Tacticus has partnered up with me for their one year anniversary event. The gameplay and strategy is actually really in depth and solid. Different heroes have different abilities and passives, which require you to play a certain way. Some heroes' abilities synergize well with others, creating unique, powerful team compositions. The onslaught mode pits your heroes against the tide of Tyranids. Arena allows you to challenge other players' main lineup. Guild Raid has you fighting bosses alongside your guild, whilst there are 10 entirely different campaigns to play through. Tacticus has grown a lot since launch, adding in a ton of quality of life updates, as well as the Elder, Tau, Space Wolves, Dark Angels, and Thousand Sun factions, totaling 58 unique heroes that you can play as. Now is the best time to download Tacticus for free and start playing, as their one year anniversary event is absolutely hemorrhaging high value rewards and loot. So click my link below to sell your soul to the Chaos Gods. <coughs> I mean, play a really Really fun 40k game. Cheers to Tacticus for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the Octarius War, discussing how it started, how absolutely glorious the carnage was, the key moments and end result. Also, the artwork for this thumbnail was commissioned by me by my very talented artist Alex. He does a lot of artwork for this channel as he is a legend. High res version will be posted to my Patreon for free. Now uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Towards the end of the 41st millennium, the Orcs had built a sizable empire within the Octarius sector. This was actually one of their biggest empires and was comparable to Ultramar in scale. From here they mustered great wars that caused a massive pain in the balls for the Imperium. The biggest strength of the Octarius Empire was that it had a distinct ruler, the Overfiend of Octarius, who was able to coordinate his vast armies and fleets, hence why he was so deadly. In the meantime, High Fleet Leviathan, the Tyranid's largest High Fleet, continued to bend Imperial worlds over and do them doggy. Getting desperate, the Radical Inquisitor Crippman, the man who would exterminate numerous Imperial worlds purely to deny them biomass for the Nids, devised the plan. If he could direct Leviathan, or at least a chunk of it, into the Octarius Empire, then Theoretically, he could kill two birds with one stone. With the help of some Death Watch, he captured some Gene Stealers, put them on a Space Hulk, and launched the Space Hulk towards Octarius, with the idea that the Gene Stealers' Psyker signal would lure Leviathan. The Gene Stealers were successful in infecting many Orcs on numerous worlds within Octarius, causing an Orc counterattack to wipe most of them out. However, the seed had been planted, and a large splinter of Leviathan was on the way to Octarius. The first world to feel the wrath of Leviathan was called Orok. It was heavily garrisoned, however, the Orcs don't have in the way of advanced warning of oncoming enemies, as you know, who the fuck would want to invade an orc world? So when the skies darkened with millions of spores, the orcs were a bit confused. Within moments, millions of nids had landed and charged at the orcs. The orcs didn't hesitate, roaring a mighty wah before engaging in battle. Within seconds, thousands had died as chitinous swarms of nids clashed with the green tide of the orcs. Squigs fought rippers, boys fought gaunts, knobs fought warriors, as war bosses fought hive tyrants. There was even Squigoths fighting Bio-Titans. Pure violent chaos. Even on the microscopic level, Orc spores fought against Tyranid microorganisms. Shit was fucked. However, with the element of surprise, a larger army, and being slightly more suited to the all-out carnage, the Tyranids won the battle and massacred the Orcs claiming the world is fuel. What became apparent during the brief war in Iraq was that due to the obscene amount of corpses on both sides, the Tunids had a shitload of biomass to draw from and could almost infinitely replenish their numbers 
so as long as they weren't getting pushed back. If they were getting pushed back, then the corpses would become inaccessible to them. For the orcs, due to how intense the fighting was, it made them all extremely fertile, shedding a fuckload of spores everywhere, which once again took advantage of all the corpses, as wet, humid things are perfect for orc growth. I mean, orcs can literally reproduce in sand, so imagine how much faster it would be in a literal ocean of dead bodies. The orcs would either need to use incendiary weapons in mass, or constantly push the nids back to deny the biomass. The nids just simply need to keep fighting and either holding the line or pushing it as all the elite veteran orcs would die and their weapons and equipment are destroyed. After all, a nid is born as a living weapon, but an orc needs a shooter and a stabber to be at his best. The point I'm making is that the nids had the advantage. Despite that though, they were almost wiped out in their entirety in the next battle. The Tyranids approached Gorala. However, the orcs were ready this time. The high fleet was ambushed in space by a shitload of orc ships, minefield, and girth. Every single nid bioship was wiped out except for one, which made a mad dash to the planet and unleashed thousands of nids to the surface before it too was destroyed. On paper, the nids were beaten and their fleet crushed. However, the hive mine was cunning and used its small army to attack orc patrols. Then after building up enough biomass, the nids began engaging in larger and larger battles before retreating, then returning at night to salvage the bodies on both sides, meaning despite their losses, they would always make a profit. This continued until the Nids had built up a force in the millions. However, the Orc Warboss was a tough cookie, and as long as he lived, the Nids couldn't win. So they sent Lictus to try kill him, but he was able to survive each attack. Eventually, the hive mind was like, fuck me, fine, and lured the Warboss into a trap in which then he was pounced on by a group of Lictors, tearing him to shreds. With their Warboss dead, the Orcs fell into disarray, easy pickings for the Nids who went on to consume the entire world, replenishing their biomass enough to rebuild their fleet and continue their invasion of Octarius. Their next target was the world of Octarius itself. Once again, carnage ensued. So many Orcs were shooting at the sky as the Tyranid spores rained down that it was literally raining chunks of Tyranid flesh that had been blown apart. The hidden gene still emerged to attack the orc flank, while swarms of gargoyles descended to engage the orc air units. This is where the war stalemated in the most violent sense possible. There was no ceasefire, it was stalemated because the orcs and nids killed each other, yet replenished at nearly the same rate. With so much biomass being collected, the nids were able to bring the war to various other worlds in the Octarius sector, whilst orcs from all around the galaxy felt the call of the war and arrived as well, creating obscene wars on dozens of worlds. Not every world in the Octarius sector was an orc world. There were numerous and Imperial worlds as well. Inquisitor Crippman had fucked up. Intending to kill two birds with one stone, he had instead given both birds a huge steroid injection straight to the scrotum. The Orcs of Actarius were bigger and stronger than ever before, whilst the Nids were evolving due to all the biomass while also learning many, many new tactics. The war was so intense that other parties started to get involved. A Cornite warband arrived and joined in on the slaughter as the pure melee of it was glorious. The Elder of Sam Han began attacking everyone as a part of some convoluted retarded scheme. The war would then spill out out of just the orc worlds, with dozens of imperial worlds getting invaded by orcs, nids, chaos, gene stealers, and sometimes all at the same time. The most successful imperial worlds were the ones that allowed the invading enemies to kill each other before then mopping up the winner. Kind of like Inquisitor Crippman's strategy, but a lot more thought out and controllable. Not just, let's throw Leviathan at the orcs and see what happens. Many space marine chapters were pulled in to help, whilst the Imperium itself decided to create a fortified cordon of worlds to try quarantine the Octarius sector. Any world in the cordon was considered to be expendable. Overall, shit had gone pretty horrifically for the Imperium. Even Death Watch operations, usually a complete stomp due to how hard the Death Watch get wanked off in the lore, often ended in failure. One such example was when an Inquisitor and her forces were able to capture an Orc device that supposedly disrupted Tyranid Synapse creatures. They wanted to test out the device, so they went to what they thought was a pretty low-key world with only a few Nids and Orcs on it. Well, turns out it wasn't that low-key, and everybody, the Inquisitors, the Death Watch, even the Elder that they had teamed up with, died for nothing. I really feel like the Octarius War was some GW writers who had been sick of all the Space Marine wank, so they just wanted the Nids and Orcs to wreck absolute tits. It wasn't all loss and death for the Imperium though. Helbrecht and his Black Templars were able to get some limelight, saving a key Imperial world, whilst the Quarantine Cordon held strong. They also launched a number of special missions, and some were successful. But the point I'm trying to make is that the Imperium was a side quest, a guest star to get their cheeks clapped. The true war between the Nids and Orcs in Octarius raged on. The Orcs would get the upper hand when Gazkel arrived, after he had recently left Armageddon. His army and girth was enough to drive back the Nids, as he himself took out a Tyranid Morlock, one of their super organisms. However, just like any ADHD kid, Gazkel soon got bored and left 
taking his army with him, once again creating the opening the Nids needed. The final war within the Octarius War had begun, as the Swarm Lord itself gathered its forces to launch its final invasion of the Octarius system. The Orcs were having the absolute time of their lives. It was almost comical their war against the Nids, like a big arcade game. Despite this, the Swarm Lord was way too cunning, outclassing the Orc war bosses on each of the different worlds within the Octaria system, achieving victory after victory as the Orcs were pushed back to the world of Octaria. It is here that the Overfiend made his stand. The final truly epic battle played out, with the Swarm Lord knowing that it needed to kill the Overfiend at all costs. It used a fleet's worth of biomass to get to the Overfiend, sacrificing elite Tyranid forms like they were Gaunts, but eventually the Overfiend and Swarm Lord came face to face and engaged in a duel. The Overfiend was a beast and had actually previously killed the Swarm Lord, but learning from its own death, the newly reformed Swarm Lord outclassed the Overfiend and whittled him down before overcoming him, feasting on his brain. Octaria was lost. With the Overfiend's death, all cohesion was shattered and infighting began. Six war bosses declared themselves the new Overfiend, and whilst Orc forces still exist in the Octaria sector in great number, the Tyranids had broken their back, gutted their capital worlds, and were the official victors of the Octarius War. Leviathan had never been stronger. It had gained a shitload of biomass, new DNA, and tactics. It's more of a mop-up job now. However, with many Orcs, who had jacked up on being veterans of the Octarius War, retreating from the Nids and entering Imperial space, alongside the fact that the Nids are now free to properly turn their attention to the Imperium, shit is looking bad. The main reason why the Nids are the current big bads of the setting in 10th edition is because they won the Octarius War. So good work Inquisitor Crippman, you giant fucking retard. After all, where do you think these new spicy bioforms have come from? I didn't see a Norn Emissary before the Octarius War. In all fairness to Crippman, he got the idea after seeing an Orc world invaded by the Nids, which more or less wiped out both sides, and there has been many occasions of that occurring time and time again. After all, the Nids were almost wiped out on their second Orc world, which would have taken out a splinter fleet of Leviathan and an entire Orc world. Not a bad result overall, but sometimes shit happens. In this instance, the Orcs getting jacked up and attacking Imperial space whilst the Nids are now powerful enough to wipe out the Imperium was just how the cookie crumbled. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where there is not only a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai, but also a bunch of live action nude cosplays. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more violent content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.